Hello. This morning I received an email that had an interesting question in it. I have a customer who has an MX480, uh, configured bridge domains on that MX480, and they were asking you about configuring LACP for the interfaces that are participating in those bridge domains. And this is totally possible, and I figured that a video would probably be a better way of demonstrating how this is done than trying to do an email reply. So this is that video, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's start by talking about what a bridge domain is. On a router, you have routed interfaces. And because these interfaces are routed, you don't have broadcast domains that can span beyond even logical interfaces. Now, for most router operations, that's fine. But there are circumstances where you do need to be able to build a broadcast domain between interfaces, flood traffic, flood multicast, and bridge domains how you do it. Now, what a bridge domain allows you to do is create a logical broadcast domain that you assign a VLAN ID and interfaces to, and then voila, switch ports, kind of. Works the same way. In our lab today, we're going to build bridge domains and connect them to a downstream SRX, which is going to be kind of pretending to be the switch in this case. And once that is done, we're going to layer on LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol, so we can use bonded interfaces that come into these bridged interfaces. In our lab here, we have some VLANs that have been defined, and we have some bridge domain interfaces so that we know exactly which interfaces we'll be using. And on both of these devices, it's basically just going to be GE000 and GE001 that we're working with. We're starting with no configuration on the MX, and I already have the config staged on the VSRX just to save time. So let's get started. First I'll show you interfaces, nothing's there. And we look at our bridge domains, nothing's there either. And then we'll start with our bridge domain, and we're going to be building four VLANs here. So I'll move this out of the way so we can see this information. So edit, bridge domains, and we give each one a name. So we're basically creating our broadcast domains here. And domain type, it's bridge, you know, unless you only have one option here, so put bridge in. We're going to be using VLAN ID 10 for V10. We'll set an interface of set V10 interface GP000.10. I'm going to basically assign this to an interface that isn't configured yet. So when we do a show command, we will see an error, but we'll sort that out in a moment. V10 routing interface, and this will be IRB10, and we are using an IRB just like we would on a switch for the L3 interface. If I do a show command, you'll see that there are errors, but that's just because I haven't built the interfaces yet. Now I'm going to build the rest of these as quickly as possible by using one of the handy commands in Junos. Copy V10 to V20, V30, and V40. Show. Now obviously we can't Leave these VLAN IDs and sub-interfaces the same, so we'll change those as well. Edit V20, place pattern 10 with 20. Edit V30, replace pattern 10 with 30. Up, edit V40, place pattern V10 with 40. Up, show. Perfect. Oh, edit interfaces. Let's configure our interfaces. GE000, we'll start here. First thing we need to do is enable flexible VLAN tagging. Now you can also just enable VLAN tagging. I like to use flexible VLAN tagging. What this does on a router is allow you to apply different tag types, basically Q and Q or single tags on your sub interfaces. We're also going to enable flexible Ethernet services, which allows you to run different types of families and encapsulations on different sub-interfaces. And that's going to be required for the encapsulation type that we're going to be using on these sub-ends. Set flexible VLAN tagging, set encapsulation, flexible Ethernet services, set unit 10, encapsulation, VLAN bridge, set 10, VLAN ID. Great. Unit 10 to unit 20. 30, 10 to unit 
for the show. Actually, you know what? I think it's probably faster to do it this way. I can just do set unit 20 VLAN ID 20 because you can only have one VLAN ID. So it won't be additive. It will just overwrite. Still faster than having to type it all out. So that should look okay. Great. Pop, can you check. Oh, we haven't created our IRB yet. We do need to do that as well. Right now we have what would equate to a working L2 bridge domain configuration, but we still don't have our layer three interfaces. So let's do that now. And these will configure, if you've ever done this on a switch, the same way. There's no special configuration for the IRBs in a bridge domain. There's nothing there. So we have set unit zero, not part 10, family line address. We'll be doing 100.0.10.1 24. Okay. Quit. You look at my VSRX, it's got the dot two in that same subnet. It is already configured. So we're just going to see if we can ping those. And we can. We'll just go through each of them just to be thorough. And just like that, we've got a layer three bridge domain. I've just realized that I've forgotten a step here, and that is that what's the sense of having a single interface in a bridge? And the whole point is that you should be able to broadcast traffic and having one interface, it might as well just be routed. So let's copy GE000. Oh, I need to be actually in there. Edit interfaces, copy GE-000 to GE001. And quit. Silly me. Actually, let's just reload that figure. Um, and I'll show you how we can confirm that this is actually working the way we expect it to here. Dot zero dot and dot two. Okay, so that's working again. What we can now do is I can send traffic out this interface, 000, because on my SRX, if we look at this, show inter configuration interfaces, I do not have GE001 configured. And I did that on purpose, because if I send a broadcast frame like an ARP out of GE000 to this router, if that bridge is working correctly, then it should be seen on packet capture coming back in on GE001. So thank you for having the pro version of Eve. So that I can do a capture on GE001 and then just ping some dummy address that is in one of those subnets and we should see an ARP come into this interface. So ping, let's say 100.0.10.10. Doesn't exist anywhere and we see the ARP. So that ARP is going from this interface through the bridge and then being received back down here. So that's how we know that this bridge is doing what it's supposed to do. Back to LACP. These interfaces will point to our aggregate when we're done. We will configure an aggregate interface AE0 here in their interfaces, and then these interfaces, this configuration essentially, will move to that aggregate, and these interfaces will be configured so that they are using members of that LACP bundle. And the very first thing that we need to do is actually enable the use of aggregate interfaces. So we we'll set chassis device count three is usually the number I go with. I explain in that other video why this is required. I don't need to commit that yet. Uh, we'll go to edit interfaces 
you know, rather than create the AE interface from scratch, I'm just going to copy GE00 to AE0 and delete GE000 because it's easier to do it that way. One, and set GE00, you know, 2.3AD, and we'll tell it to point at that aggregate. And then I can copy GE00 to G1. And just like that, I've got an aggregate, I've got my aggregate interfaces, and I have my aggregate built. Although this is still missing configuration. I need to go in there, and I need to enable LAC P. Oh, there we go. That should be complete. We don't need to touch our IRBs, they stay in place. We do need to update our bridge domains, and we will see errors here because it will complain that those are not defined, and that is true. So we can see that we've just updated our interfaces to point to the aggregate that we've defined in the sub appropriate sub-interface. Nothing else in here has changed with the bridge domains. If we look here, we've modified our member interfaces to now map to that aggregate, and we have defined the aggregate. Obviously, we had to add in the aggregate ether options, but everything else was directly copied over from the interface config we previously had, and then the IRBs have remained the same. So we'll commit that, and we'll switch back over to my VSRX, and I'll load the P configuration, and we'll wait for that to commit and then we'll check everything out. Collecting and distributing. That is a very good sign in LACP. Yes, indeed. 100.0.10.2, and you can see that we still have layer three reachability to all of those defined subnets. We can see that this link is up and it says it's two gig. Not much to it. And once you have the principles down, it's just really moving a little bit of configuration around. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if there are any videos that you would like to see, please ask and I'll put something together. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.